Hi, I'm Rusty from the Rusty Harden Studio, and today I am going to demonstrate some of my doodles with colors. I began several months ago creating doodle drawing classes for online. I recently moved to add in doodles with color, so now I want to share them with you. My basic supplies are I'm using the paper, which is about an 8 by 5 um, piece of paper. I use the Strathmore Visual Journal, the Bristol Smooth. I love it because the surface is so smooth and I love the way my pen glides over it. My pen of choice is the Uniball Signo Micro 207. It's waterproof and fade proof. The colors that I'm using are from the Derwent Intense Pan Studio Set. It has 22 colors and a black and white, but we'll look at that a little bit closer. I'm going to move these things away, and I'm going to um, show you how I draw them on a piece of cardstock, and then um, actually draw them onto my onto my um, onto my next piece of paper. So there we go. So there's my other paper. Okay, good. And here's my cardstock. I'm going to first draw the um, circle. I'm not a great circle maker, so however you want to make yours, I do believe in that. So I'm using a vintage spool. I have quite a, quite a bag of these, and um, so far, this is, this is um, what I'm using for. So I want to try to be mindful about where these petals are. So I'm going to start, so I'm not making the whole circle. I'm going to come around it. There we go. So there I have it. Half a circle, maybe. And I'll come around and pull it up more when, if and when I need it. But I'm going to add these flowers first. I start the centers. I make it, I'm going to make this kind of big so you can see it clearly. So I'm going to fill in my circle. I'm going to come around with another wavy circle and another wavy circle. So I feel if you can identify with the shape, then you can draw anything. And I find that these shapes of these petals remind me of a triangle. True enough. But I want my petals to be a little bit little bit softer. So I'm going to have triangles in mind. I'm going to make the corners of the triangle a little more rounded. And I'm going to make it a little bit poofier. So I'm going to put four of them on here. And then I'm going to add a wavy line to connect those petals. Let's add them. I'm going to work a little smaller on this. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to give a wavy circle, fill it in, a wavy line circle around it. I'm going to add my poofy triangles. Another poofy triangle. I like to have four of them. And it's okay if I don't see all of this one. I think I'll probably be able to come up a little bit over that. It's always an adjustment in it. And I'm going to make the lines that connect it. Here we go. So I'm going to make my next one here. Wonky circle filled in. Wavy circle. Wavy circle. My poofy triangles with rounded corners. I have to stop because it's under this one. It's a doodle, so perfection just doesn't exist here. So that is so freeing and it is so relaxing. So there we go. And one more. Wonky circle. Fill it in. Wavy circle around it. Wavy circle. Um, triangle rounded. Coming behind here. Wavy one here here and here. I'm going to connect it with wavy lines. And I want to put lines in each one, in each petal. I'm happy with that. So the next element that I really want to to add is is this one. Everything else can be adjusted around it. So I'm going to demonstrate on this card and I'm going to make it a little bit larger. So these are um, petal shapes and in some contexts leaf shapes. So um, this is what they look like. 
So if I have an oval, and I do, and I round off that oval, the top, to a point, then I have this shape. So I'm going to start with a circle. I'm going to put a, a dot in the middle. And I'm going to give it some little spokes. I think I like to have a little bigger, and I'm going to go over that line. And that makes me happy. So here comes my first leaf shape or petal shape. They make good uh, candle shapes too, by the way. And then here's one here. I'm going to skip a little bit of a space and put one here. And I have one here. And then I wanted to put one in here. Can't see the bottom of it. I really like these. I will go over them two or three times, make my line really a lot more significant. I won't do that here. And then I have some lines in here. There we go. So re by going over the lines, really makes really makes it stand out. So I have I have um, I'm going to make the adjustment of this circle around up here. I don't really see it on this side, so I'm going to put these bands where I've used the teal and the turquoise color. Uh, that's about far enough. I always have some element of my design that is not going to be painted or color added. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to make what I call a swirl circle up here, and I'm going to bring it down. And then I'm going to make a swirl circle right here, and I'm going to bring it down. And then I'm going to have aft circle circles all the way around half circles half ovals it's up to you however you see them oh, and I'm only putting them on along one side there we go oh, I'm liking it I'm gonna come in and add a little bit darker circle up in that makes it more substantial too and I might go over it a couple times we never know we'll see so back to my circle I'm going to make slanting lines that that um, starts from this from this petal to there so I'm going to feed off of that and make another slanting line and another slanting line and another slanting line and I'm going to come bring them on around it's a natural it's a natural curve shift there we go I'm gonna add more lines on them I'm gonna go over my lines a few times make sure they connect all the way down to the circle edge and they connect to each other I'm also gonna make sure that the circle line that I go over it a little bit heavier too There we go. Okay. Now from there, I have circles. I'm going to make a circle chain and I'm going to swing it out. And then when I'm out here, I'm going to start swinging it just another direction. And in between, I'm going to make smaller little circles to make a connection there. And just make these things up so you can add whatever you like. And then at the end of it, I'm going to make a bigger circle. I'm going to make an opposite direction of that, of the, um, the leaf shape there. I'm going to make it on here. Then I'm going to add lines. I like little curly Q lines. Now I'm going to create this vining line up here. And here we go. So I've got a kind of a swoop, swoopy line. I'm going to put my petal shape on the end of that. Add my lines. Little leaf shapes on the side. 
and a few little curly cue lines okay then I have another one that's going to come down this way so I got my petal shape here and my lines I've got a few leaf shapes leaf shapes little curly cue lines there we go now I'll go over these lines a few times to make them more substantial I'll do the same thing with this line I think I'm going to go over the bigger circles with an extra line around them and I'll look it over and I'll decide if anything needs to have a more substantial or cleaned up line and I'll look at this in just a second and make that decision and in here I put dot I don't know why I just did it made me happy so there we go okay I would go over these a few more times there you go I'm pleased with that so now I'm going to move on to painting now this ink needs to dry as most inks do and not only dry but I like to see it I like to see it cure so I have one already prepared for us it doesn't take long but I don't want to go straight from the sketch to the um, to the to the painting so let me grab my I'm so excited when I open these love I love these colors let me pull it down so you can see the palette as I paint love it now inside um, inside this kit is a water brush I've already added the water to it I like it because um, you can control how much water is in your is in your brush um, I'm going to I have a spray bottle these are some of my support my support materials I have a spray bottle I just use a bottle that had glass cleaner for my glasses. I'm going to spray my pans and I just go ahead and spray all the way across just a little bit because I never know what color I want to throw in there. And I always spray my always spray my um, sponge a little bit. I have a little bit of water in a um, in a container and I also have paper towels on hand to wipe out my brush, my 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 water brush. Derwent has some really nice sets of water brushes. So I'm going to begin. I'm going to make sure I have um, water coming my, so my brush is full. Sometimes I'll put a dot of, drop of water there because that might be all the water I need instead of going to a container or squeezing it out. Control the water. You'll really control the painting. So I have my key. And so I'm going to use the fuchsia first. So I'm going to take the fuchsia and I'm going to... Um, paint in the petals. There's not a whole lot of water being used here or transferred to the paper so I don't have to worry about taping down my paper or anything because it um, just not really leaving behind that much water which is another really nice thing about these about these um, water brushes. They are nice I have to say that I've been using them for a lot of years. So I'm going to fill in each petal. In reality, I'm actually going to fill in the back areas too. Well, that was a lot. This is, I'm glad that happened because that's a little more than I wanted. So I'm going to use my paper towel and take a little bit of the water out of that brush and it's going to pick up some of it for me. So I don't have to live with, um, with too much being there. So I'm going to go ahead and paint all of my top petals. In a moment, I'm going to go back and I'm going to paint the little petals that are in the background. But I tend to just focus on one thing at a time because this is going to allow this to dry. I also like painting it in the direction that I know something grows. So instead of painting back and forth like this, I'll put this paint in here and I'll pull it down to the center. I may get some natural, get some natural um, lines in there. I've got one more to do. In that color just gorgeous. Ink tents 
are, um, well, first are, they are what they say. I have to have uh, plenty of water in here to keep this from being this, this light. But ink tents are exactly what they say they are. They're very intense and they're also permanent. So I can't come back and um, accidentally come back in and lift this. If I'm going to paint over it, I have too much there again. So I'm going to take the water out of my brush, just like I showed you earlier. And now uh, my brush is going to pick up some of it. I'm going to pick it up, wipe it off. There you go. It's all about managing the water when it comes to any water medium. So I am now ready to come. And I'm going to do the same color back here, picking up a little bit more color but I'm gonna paint these twice. Um, if I came too soon and it painted next to it, this would just wick right into the, right into the petal, but, but it's already settled in enough. Although it's not completely dry to the touch, it's enough. So there we go. I just have to barely touch that and it picks up gorgeous color, gorgeous color. So some of the fun things you can do with ink tints is you can come back over with other colors over it, which is what we'll do here. And, um, and I'll do it here too when I'm ready to go over it again. So it's, it's permanent and it'll serve you really well. There we go. There we go. I'm going to come back in a little bit and I'm going to um, paint over that again with the same color and get that little contrast look. So I could just dip out, rinse out my brush by squeezing, squeezing the water out of it to a paper towel and clean it out. And that's fine if I'm just doing a travel, but I have a little bit of water in a, in a glass bowl right next to me, so I'm cool with that. So now I want to add um, tri-colors, three colors to, to these petals. So first thing I'm going to do with these guys is I have a little water in my brush. I'm going to just squeeze, squeeze out a drop. There it is. I'm going to come back and touch that drop. And use this palette right here. I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to pull that color down. It's a pretty little yellow, isn't it? I think it's called sun yellow. But yeah, I know it's called sun yellow. You have another really pretty yellow up there that is called sherbet, sherbet lemon. It's kind of got a little, a little cooler. It's got a tiny bit, a little bit more um, green in it. And um, it's so pretty though. Vibrant, so bright. So here I go. Doesn't take a lot of time to just brush this um, color right into there. Oh, it's so pretty. So, so, so pretty. Now, I don't need to wait for it to dry because I'm gonna come back and add my next layer. I'm gonna come in, come in and pick up. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this mango color and I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm just dropping into each one. It's gonna blend because it's damp and I'm gonna have some soft lines with it that way. So here we go. Just soft, soft, soft. Then I'm going to wait for it to dry a little bit before I come back and add. I'm going to come back and add the bright orange to it, to this down here. Now the colors, they're all transparent, so the colors that are under it will influence any colors that I put on top of it. So I don't really want to come and paint to this right now, so how about if I come down here with my um, bright orange? And I have bright, the bright orange in a few places. You'll see it. You'll see it in here in a minute. You'll see it in these sections right here, but they're also in these little buds that I have down here. So I'm just going to go ahead right over my ink and um, fill those in. And I forgot to add the extra lines to that. That's okay. I come back with my pen right over this paint and add them after they dry. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to clean out my brush. I'm going to come up here to that um, sherbet lemon, which has got a little bit of green in it. Oh, love it. Just love that color. So I'm going to paint every little circle. the big circles with this color. And then I'm gonna come and add the fuchsia in between. How bright, bright that is. Whew. I'm also, while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead, and this is dried enough now for me to go ahead. I'm gonna add that um, pretty little sherbet lemon, it's yellow with just a little bit of bright green in it in all my centers. And there you go. I don't know why I keep saying there you go. But there you go. I'm going to use, um, come and pick up a little bit of this green here. 
I have I have a yellow green and then I have a have a, a little bit cooler green and that's what I'm going to use for these little tiny leaves I have right here. Just touch it in there. Good. In the meantime, these have dried enough for me now to come and get my fuchsia again. And you see, I got a, I picked up a lot of color. That is the one thing you're gonna get a lot of color. That's not a bad thing. It's just a thing. So now I'm gonna paint these um, spaces in between these petals. It's called glazing when you put a wet color over a dry color and it just really makes the colors intense. Well, if you pick up a lot of the ink tents anyway, it's gonna be intense, but um, I like layering it. I do, I love layering it. All these little lines that I put in there incidentally last time, it's still gonna be there to kind of work for me. So I like seeing them and then I like, as, as everything dries, you'll see them. One more in there. And then I have up here. And then pick up a little more color for in there. So I really have um, mostly dry from these little petals. So I'm ready to come up here now and get my bright orange. And I don't want a lot of color. So um, let me take my color out of my brush again. When I know that I don't want a lot of color, I'll just put a drop of water in this little palette thing. That way if I pick up too much color, when you thin it, it gets a little bit lighter. That's how you get your lighter colors. Make sure you have, have, um, have it watered down a little bit. So I'm gonna put these guys in the center of all of these. They're just barely damp, so that's gonna blend really, really, really well. I don't even know if I need to do anything with it but I don't leave most things alone for very long. So let's just touch a little bit in this. Okay, see how that line's a little harsh for me? I don't know, it doesn't have to be harsh for you. So I'm gonna take my little aqua brush, I'm gonna take the water out of it. I'm gonna start out here where, where it's yellow and I'm gonna push that back and kind of lift it up. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Just lift it up a little bit and push it back. It's just a technique. You've got so much control. There we go, I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and use my um, bright orange. I'm gonna paint this, um, these shapes right here with it. Put it on and took it off. Let's just add a little bit more to it. Oh, there you go. Love it. And I still go ahead and paint individual shapes. Um, instead of just coming in and doing the whole thing. Very good. I have to get some fuchsia again because now I'm ready to paint the in-between little circles. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about color and my choices. It's not, the, it's not the choices of what I chose to use, but rather my, um, my choices about where I, once I've chosen some colors, where I'm gonna put them. So I don't wanna just have this fuchsia right here, which is why it works perfect in the little circles in between the big circles. And um, so I have this, I have this um, Sherbert lemon green, I have it traveling around through the painting also. I have it, I have it in the centers and I have it in these circles or the little bees, whatever you wanna call them. So um, I, I feel like it ties, it ties in, it ties in the pieces. So now I'm going to, um, I've gone with the um, teal and the turquoise for these bands. Now the reason I did that, chose those colors, is because on the color wheel, the opposite color of, of the blues would be, would be oranges. So, so the teals and the turquoise works really well with this yellow, orange, and the, and the orange I have in there. So I'm gonna go with the teal first, and that's gonna be my first section in here. Then I'm gonna skip a section. Oh, that's a nice big section. You can see my drawings are always different. And right away, I'm good with coming up here and getting my teal, which is also a gorgeous color. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint right next to it. 
They might blend a little bit, but that's okay with me. If I didn't want them to blend, I'd wait for them to dry. Get all the way down to the edge. Okay, let me have a quick look at it. And um, I don't think I have enough green in, in those um, little leaves, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more. I'm going to pop it in. These water brushes, they have such a nice point on them. It's easy to get into small spaces. And I realize that I completely missed this little circle right there. So I'm going to come back up here and get my sherbet lemon again. And I'm going to fill it in. There we go. So this is my um, color doodle for this week. So thank you for letting me share it with you. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy talking about it. I love the colors. So thank you, and I will look forward to seeing you on the next video.